Hey guys, welcome back to the Alcohol Free RV. I wanted to share a couple of things that we did to maximize our trip to Cedar Point. We spent two nights and one full day at the park on July 2nd, and we found five things that helped us, well, make the best of that one limited day that we had there. Number one, stay on property. Cedar Point has a beautiful, beautiful campground with I think about 200 sites or so. And there's a couple of real good benefits of being able to stay on property because number one, you don't have to deal with traffic in the morning. The traffic can get pretty intense on you know a normal drive up. You know, if you're staying outside of the park. There's a, a couple of mile long causeway that fills up with traffic and then everybody's gonna pay for parking. So you avoid that first part of the line, which is really, really helpful. Secondly, by staying on property, now you can stay in an RV resort or you can stay in one of the on-property hotels like the Breakers Hotel. And these properties allow you access before the general public because you're on their resort already. On the day that we went, the, the park opened for the general public at 10 a.m. We were allowed in at 9. Now also, because there's fewer people at that 9 o'clock hour, the line to actually enter you know, through the turnstiles to get into the park was a lot shorter as well. So those two reasons are really the, the best part about staying on property. If you have small children or someone in your group that isn't as excited about roller coasters as maybe the rest of the group, um, if they haven't been on some really big coasters before, the smaller coasters are not open typically in that early entry period. So we got into the park and our son was not necessarily super excited about getting on a 300 foot tall coaster first thing in the morning. And we were thinking maybe let's get on the Iron Dragon or the Gemini just to kind of get warmed up, so to speak. Those rides unfortunately were not open. So we did walk around the park trying to find something that was a little more tame for him. And ultimately we ended up as our first coaster going on the Magnum because it was open uh, with the rest of the rides. So it worked out for us. He loved it and it didn't cause any problems for him. But if you have someone that's not been on big coasters before, it can be quite intimidating when you get up there and you're, you're staring at a 200 plus foot hill. So it's just something to be aware about as you're trying to plan out your day, make sure that you're taking that into consideration. If you're not going to get on a coaster that is 200 plus feet first thing in the morning, you may just want to take your time and get there so that you can get in line right when those rides open. Cedar Point does have a list of what rides are open for the early entry and which are, I guess the remaining would not be. So you can check that out before you go just to make sure you're making the best use of your time and not wearing yourself out walking aimlessly around the park in, those, in that first hour. They have a couple of different levels of uh, campsites. There's just some basic, you know, regular full hookups, and then they've got some upgrades that include some additional amenities. Uh, their top of the tier site is the back end sites out by the lake. You've got beautiful views out there, and uh, they come with like paved patios, grills, extra chairs, picnic tables. They're just really beautiful sites. The roads are really wide. It's easy to back in. You know, there's, they've got some pull through sites as well. And so access is pretty simple to get in and out of the park. I highly recommend checking it out if you're looking to have a Cedar Point vacation in your RV. Number two, meal packages. Cedar Point has a couple of different meal packages that you can choose from that allow you to have access to beverages and food throughout your stay on the resort. 
So the first option that we chose was to get the ride and refresh tickets. And I think that was only available through staying on property. I couldn't find these tickets outside of making a, a reservation for the campground. Now, what the ride and refresh is, is a discounted package where you get to go into the park and get free beverages every 15 minutes all day. So these are, of course, non-alcoholic beverages. Coke products is what they serve, and they'll give you a disposable cup each time you go up. So we made use of that. Generally, you know, we would get like a half a cup of, you know, a Gatorade or a soda or water in between our rides. And then, you know, anytime we're in between rides, we could just kind of top off so that we're maintaining our, our hydration throughout the day. Now, they do also have a souvenir cup uh, program that allows you to fill it up. I think that's about $13, uh, 13 to $14 as of 2021. And that program gives you the, the souvenir cup and the beverages throughout the day. Um, that souvenir cup is only good for your first day, however. If you want refills and you're there for multiple days, you'll have to get uh, your beverages. I think it's either a souvenir cup or all day, so you only get one souvenir cup out of the, out of the deal. So um, I do highly recommend having a way to hydrate yourself throughout the day. There's little cover on most of the lines, so you do want to be aware that, especially if it's really hot out, you're going to want to be taking in a lot of fluids to make sure that you're having the best time possible. Now, there's another thing that you can do to hopefully save you a little bit of money. So there is a meal package that you can get that allows you to eat every 90 minutes. As of our stay in 2021, it was about $30 and a full meal would cost you, I don't know, around $15. So you you have to have about two meals to make it worth your while. Now, we ended up kind of eating a little bit late for lunch, and so I don't think we really broke even on that one, but for some folks, it might. Another consideration that you might have is if you have a large family, maybe get a couple of those meals and kind of spread your eating out throughout the day so that you can have like, you know, mom and one of the kids gets a meal and shares it dad and one of the kids gets a meal and shares it and that way you're only having like you're using two meals at once and then in a couple hours get something else and just kind of keep your hunger at bay throughout the day using that package that's probably what i would do next time is not buy three packages one for each of us but kind of split it up a little bit so that you can share food and eat some smaller meals. You probably don't want too full of a belly if you're going on some of these wild coasters that Cedar Point has. The third tip that I have today is to plan what rides are the most important for you to get on. The ride lines at Cedar Point, because there are tens of thousands of people that visit every single day, you kind of want to know, hey, do I want to go on the Millennium Force and also Steel Vengeance and the Top Thrill Dragster? Those are really some of those top rides and the lines can get pretty long. So I think the line times were about two hours for some of those rides at certain points throughout the day. So if you plan out the most important rides to get on, you're gonna be able to have at least a few of those rides that you're able to get on without a significant wait. Now, this kind of ties into the fourth tip, which Cedar Point has a mobile app. And while you're in the park, you can actually see the ride times. So the Steel Vengeance might have a 95 minute wait right now, but the Top Thrill Dragster might be only 45. So you might wanna go and get in one, the line for something that's a, a little bit shorter of a, a wait because as you get off that ride, you might be in a better position to get on your next coaster. Now, a lot of the coasters have significant lines, as I mentioned. Uh, we looked at a couple of points throughout the day and most of the coasters were over an hour and some were nearing that two hour mark. So 
if you don't plan ahead what are the most important rides to get on, you are going to miss out on something. That looks awesome. That's cool. Continuing on with the mobile app, it kind of has the ability to tell you how far away each of the each of the rides is. So if there's two rides that have a similar wait time, you can actually look on the app and go, "Hey, I'm close to Rougarou." and a little bit further away from Maverick. And so I'm gonna go to Rougarou right now because the wait time is small enough that it makes sense to get on it now. So that's another thing that you can do in the app. They actually have order ahead at some of the restaurants as well, which I found to be pretty interesting. And I didn't know that until after we had actually exited the park for the day, but that would have been super helpful. That's another way. If you order ahead, your food should be ready by the time you get there. And then you're not waiting for the food to be prepared. Now, I didn't dive too deeply into that, but my guess is that that's at more, some of the more sit down type restaurants rather than the uh, kind of walk up restaurants. I don't know if that's the case. So you might want to check into that before you go to the park to see if that's something that might benefit you. And the number five tip is fast lane passes. We love Cedar Point. Both my wife and I grew up in Northeast Ohio. And so getting to Cedar Point now, being primarily based in Colorado, is a lot more difficult. So we wanted to absolutely maximize the number of coasters that we could get on. There are two levels of fast lane pass available at Cedar Point. As of 2021, the, the lower level is $81 or it starts at $81. It might be different based on what day of the week it is or if it's a holiday, but that one is $81 and it gives you access to a bunch of rides and sitting in a shorter line. Now, the way that the fast lane works is there is a separate entrance for the ride that merges in much closer to the, the train station that you bypass a big portion of the lines. Now, the second level of the pass is the Fastlane Ultimate, and it gives you access to everything that the Fastlane Standard Pass gives you, but also Steel Vengeance, Top Thrill Dragster, Maverick, and the Millennium Force. Those four coasters are still in very high demand, and going with that extra uh, Ultimate ticket, which is about $100 this year, or starting at about $100, it's it gives you access to those rides. So if you want to be able to ride all these rides, then I highly recommend looking into at least one of those passes, especially if you're only there for one day. If you're making a week out of it, probably don't want to have that extra expense every single day. But uh, for us, we were able to get on 17 coasters in just one day between early access and the Fastlane Ultimate Pass. So for us, that worked out great. We were on Steel Vengeance twice, we rode Magnum twice, we rode Top Thrill Dragster twice, Maverick only once, uh, Valraven twice, Rougarou twice, uh, Raptor twice, Corkscrew, Gemini, uh, I think I've covered them all, but we got on all the big rides, all the big rides, all the special rides twice. So I think that was perfect for us. Another thing that it let us do is look at the line that we're in. And if the ride stops, you know, still vengeance, they were still testing it when we got in line and there was a delay. So we said, you know what, we'll come back in it after we've ridden something else. So we left that line, went and rode something else, came back and pretty much got right on the ride within about 15 minutes. So it, it was an amazing experience for us having that extra access. It is not cheap at all, but we love roller coasters. We've been to Cedar Point so many times growing up that having access and our son's first time riding those coasters, 
being able to have the best thrills of the day without delay. It was absolutely amazing. So hopefully you enjoyed these tips, guys. I appreciate you watching. If you like videos like this, go ahead, click that subscribe button and give us a thumbs up and uh, give us a comment. Let us know what you think. Is there anything else that you do differently when you go to an amusement park? We'd love to hear your tips also, so let us know. Thanks for watching, guys. My name's Todd. Again, this is the Alcohol Free RV, and we will see you next time.